I know there are about 5 billion different guides out there, but every guide has its own points and views, and I reckon it wouldn't go amiss to add some of mine. At first, this video was supposed to be some sort of guide to put together a perfect budget iPhone system. But when I was preparing the video, it evolved in this complex buying guide where I point out lots of do's and don'ts when buying an iPhone system, recommendations what to buy, why and where, and some recommendations what not to buy. In the process, I'll tell you what gear I've chosen as a budget system and why. Everything I'm gonna choose to put this system together is of course second hand used or vintage, however, the guide itself includes new and used components alike. I'll split the video into 7 parts. This one's gonna be about general recommendations, whereas in later ones I'm gonna describe everything in more detail. Second part's gonna be about amplifiers, third's gonna be about cassette decks, fourth about reel to reel decks, fifth about turntables, sixth about CD players, and seventh about loudspeakers. There are literally millions of possibilities to choose from depending on what you prefer – design, sound quality, convenience, usability or simply price. Fortunately, good sound quality doesn't equal high price. There are ridiculously overpriced devices that's price doesn't match the quality and extremely cheap devices that sound absolutely amazing for the price. There are tons of different brands, systems and components you can use to put together the perfect system. The question is, what to choose? The cheapest and the most convenient iPhone systems are so-called mini-systems. Even though they are convenient and include everything in one package, they pretty much always sound like crap. Less crappy than the likes of these though. I would recommend avoiding them at all cost. I'd go with separates any time. Separates don't take up much more space than mini-systems if stacked up properly, and the sound quality is incomparable. There is a certain price difference, but if you're lucky you may find very good second-hand used components for a very low price. Separates are also excellent for tailoring all the equipment for specific needs. For example, if you don't want tuna, you don't have to include it. If you want a different record player, you can always switch it for another one. The same goes for the cassette deck, etc. etc. Whatever your equipment or format may be, the most important bit is still a good recording. If the recording is crap, no equipment in the world will open to make it sound good. In the end, what matters the most is to enjoy the music, but that doesn't mean you can't enjoy it in better quality, does it? If you've watched some of my previous videos, you may have noticed I'm a sucker for vintage gear. Vintage audio components have lots of advantages and of course some disadvantages compared to contemporary devices. If you're lucky, you can get some of the best equipment for a very low price. What was I and then can certainly put to shame some of today's top of the line equipment. Take for instance tape decks. The best tape decks produced today is probably worse than the worst tape deck produced in 80s or 90s. So practically any vintage deck you can get is better than whatever you can get today as new, given that it's in a good condition that is. I know what some of you think, what a load of bollocks, new devices are made with newer and better technology, components are new, etc etc. Yeah, I saw a photo too, until I had two amps from two different eras. Anchorface A75 made in 2018, which is supposed to be one of the best Class A power amps out there, and Sony TN7 or Yamaha B3 made in 1977. I don't need to tell you which one of these amps sounded better to me ears. And the price difference is massive. If you're lucky you can find the Yamaha B3 in a good condition on eBay for about 1000 quid. The A75 however costs used about 10 times more. Of course not every piece of old hardware is better than every new one, but you know what I mean. Next one is more like a personal preference than advantage. And that's looks or design or whatever you want to call it. I certainly fancy the looks of the vintage equipment more than the of new ones. Have a look at some of these masterpieces and their staggering craftsmanship. New devices though look like utter shite where the designers had absolutely no imagination. Again, it doesn't apply to every single new product. Let's call the next one serviceability. Some older equipment can be easier to fix depending on what's wrong with it, but generally there are no chips or components that are difficult to get. On the flip side, it can also be extremely difficult to fix an old equipment, cause it may be impossible to find some components that are no longer produced. Best example is amplifiers with beefer transistors. They are not impossible to fix if you know what you're doing, unless you've got one of their precious VFA transistors blown. Since these transistors are no longer being produced, they are almost impossible to obtain. Cassette decks can also be very easy to fix, unless one of their ads is damaged, 
And since the ads for certain models are again not being produced anymore, the deck is a goner. In these cases, you either get rid of the device and get a different one, or get the same model, salvage it for the parts you need, and fix your damaged amp or deck or whatever device you've got. But getting, for instance, Vifa tab off of eBay can get quite pricey, since even untested or no working devices can be quite desired for among some collectors. The biggest disadvantage is the time. No matter how good the equipment used to be, it degrades over the time. If properly serviced and taken care of, it can last forever, but if it's pushed to its limits day after day for decades without getting it serviced, someday it will just give up. And unfortunately, when you're buying used equipment, you can't be sure how it was treated during its lifetime. And that leads me to another advantage. I'm not saying it applies to every new product, but there's a huge difference in build quality. Almost everything made today is sort of half-baked, crappy materials, shitty components, nowadays everything's made not to last, even top-of-the-line products. Everybody's got different preferences, and the design may be what you crave more than a sound quality. For me personally, the sound quality is the most important bit, so if I found a pile of shit that sounds two levels better than the amp I currently use, I will certainly use it. But I prefer not to use a pile of shit as an amplifier, I fancy beautiful gear just as much as the next guy. If you fancy beautiful gear too, you may want to match the colour and the shape of all your devices, which is unfortunately not always possible if you're after vintage gear. In that case, it's better to go after one brand from the same time period, cause the colour and the shape changed a lot during different periods. Also, be careful where you place everything. Some of the gear may need some space for cooling, and if you stuck it inside the furniture without any sort of airflow, you may easily end up frying your amplifier or some other stuff. Me personally, I keep everything on top of this cabinet to make sure nothing will overeat. You may also like to stick all the components on top of each other, so everything takes as little space as possible. In some cases, it may get quite heavy, so make sure your furniture can handle the weight. There are lots of places you can buy second and used and vintage electronics. An excellent place to buy them is of course thrift shops. You can find absolute treasures in these shops. Also, you can be sure you get what you see, and usually for much lower price than online. Lots of these shops will even let you test and try the gear you fancy. Even though it's always better to know what you're getting, the problem is, it will always sound different in different rooms. Moreover, when you're testing vintage equipment, don't test it with heavy metal or something similar, it's very difficult to hear if a distortion or some other problem is going on, so test it with clean and clearly recognisable instruments. If you want to shop online, eBay is of course the safest way, not cheapest though. In all those years I spent on eBay, I saw only a few obvious scammers there. Moreover, eBay's got some sort of buyer's protection program that protects the buyer to some extent, and you've got a guarantee you'll get your money back in case something goes pear-shaped. Another very good site is Reverb. I've bought a couple of things off of Reverb and it always went smooth. It's kinda like eBay but only for music equipment and gear. If you want to search entire web at once, there's an aggregator site called iFi Shark that searches all possible sites all over the world and spits out the result. It searches eBay, Reverb and tons of other sites all over the world. Even though it's a pretty good way to search for an audio equipment, you should be careful what sites you visit from there. I found out that for example German site called Quarka is full of scammers, so I'd be very careful before buying anything there. On the other hand, German site called eBay Kleinanzeigen, I don't know how to pronounce it, is basically a pretty safe choice. Not only need to apologize to Japanese that don't fall in the next category, but I've got very, very, very poor experience with buying stuff from Japan. And very, very, very poor is an understatement of the century. I've bought lots of stuff from Japan, and 90% of it all was so terribly packed, it either didn't survive the trip or arrived in an horrible state. I've got two examples I felt the senders are taking the piss out of me. And that's when I bought the MR GT2000 turntable and Nikon FM3 camera. The turntable came in a box with absolutely no cushioning, no bubble wrap, not even some bloody newspaper. The bloke I bought it from could have just put the sticker with my name and address straight on the turntable, it would have served the same purpose. And the camera. The camera came in a paper bag, a bloody paper bag. You can't make this shit up. I didn't take any picture of the camera, unfortunately, but it looked something like this. Nothing like that ever happened when I bought something from Europe or the US. 
It's quite impossible to give you specific recommendations in this video since there are about 5 billion different devices. But I'm gonna give you my 3 personal picks in 4 different price categories in each part of the series. As an example, I'm gonna put together the best possible iFi system for the least possible money. And I mean iFi as a really good performer. The system's gonna consist of 6 parts, an amplifier, loudspeakers, a turntable, CD player, reel-to-reel -reel deck, cassette deck and maybe a tuner but since nobody really What's obviously rather important when choosing used equipment is a condition of the device. You don't want to get some beat up crap for a couple of quid. Generally the better condition of the chassis, the higher chance it's in better overall state and the less work it will need. As you may have noticed I'm no fan of contemporary products. I'm not saying everything new sucks, you can certainly find good or even excellent products today. However, is it worth buying these new devices? We'll find out in the next part of the series.